The following is a presentation of CBC Sports. His performance has defied all logic. At times, it borders on the miss of this superhuman power that closes the door on opposition marksmen. It is not new. A year ago, Patrick Waugh, on no less than 10 occasions, led his team to victory in overtime. The Waugh magic is still there. Not even illness has affected the spell. He was beaten in game one, but was strong. He was brilliant and almost unbeatable in game two. But the best was yet to come. Two nights ago in Boston, the master magician faced 60 shots before his teammates again needed overtime to close the act. Used to the line, couldn't get Breeze, what a shot, deflected! Casey, now they score! Kurt Muller is the overtime hero of game five! It was the sorcerer himself who sealed the Bruins' fate in game Montreal Forum has seen countless magical moments in its long and glorious. Kelly Johansson with his glove right in Kevin Stevens' face, trying to draw him into something. It's almost as if Stevens is saying, you're not going to get me to take a penalty. Right. Meanwhile, Barubi would like to have a shot at Stevens, or anyone else that's in that black sweater. Amongst the players who are on the ice for the Penguins, Ruby would do well if he could take anybody with him. Yeah, but if he ends up going in further. And he almost got a glove on it. Dave Hannon, who said, as we mentioned, you play well in the playoffs, you'll play in the National Hockey League a long time, had a sensational game. I don't think he saw him lose a face-off the entire game. Picks it up and just puts it up over Martin Brodeur, who had no chance. Interesting, Wayne Presley had was a in foot the crease. in the crease. And Martin Brodeur immediately looked up to the referee, Terry Gregson, but the goal counts. A player with a foot in the crease is not reviewable. It's a best of seven series, and it's oh, going to take nine. Best of eight series, I guess, if you count this as two games. Yeah. <laughs> Final score. Dave Hannon and the Sabres won. The Devils nothing. Ah, oh, we're just glad to be here too to watch a little playoff history. I think that when you look at uh, the entire evening, the Sabres had a couple of. Uh, it's fitting that they at least win this hockey game because it would have been a tough way to go out of the playoffs. Well, absolutely. In quadruple Friday night, back at the Meadowlands, and uh, you wonder how much impact this game will have on, on that one, these teams being as tired as they are. Great chances at the end. Tommy Oblin came so close to winning the game at one end, almost beating Dominic Hasek from in tight, and then uh, back to the backhanded up over uh, Martin Brodeur. But a tough way to lose a game and a great way to win one if you're the Buffalo Sabres. Dave Hannon will be the hero in Buffalo. And after scoring in the fourth overtime period for the Sabres. Inside the lead line, 46 seconds remaining. Amadi banging at it there on the boards. Amadi severed it. And it'll be night tie over the glass by Zezel. And another face-off coming up inside the leaf line. They've worn that clock down another bit, though. 39.2 seconds remaining now. Oh, Bill Burke made a great decision out there. He knows that you're down a man. He wouldn't get sucked into going over and getting tangled up with down, and the puck squirts out to an odd man situation. He stayed 10 feet away where he was able to get to the front of the net if he had. Zazel and Berg will try to shut the door along with LaFave and Ellen. The Blackhawks have Lance Sutter to take the face off. Rodick is to his left. Amonley to his right. Chelios and Suter, the Blue Liners. Suter can't stop it. It's shot down the ice. It'll be icing. So Chelios wastes no time getting now. 
favor of the extra attacker. 26 seconds left. That's all. Shooter. Will he shoot it? Will he shoot it? When will he shoot it? There it goes. It's intercepted and knocked the center. Two seconds. Chicago with the puck. There's a shot through the crease. Stopped at the line by Cherry. Another shot. Knocked down in front. And this game is over. And the Toronto Maple Leafs get one goal in the first period on a power play. And the Gums make that one goal stand up. He's standing by playoffs. And now goodbye to the Blackhawks. We're saying goodbye to a great piece of history here in Chicago. The old stadium is done. And so are the Hawks. One to nothing. Welcome back to the Pacific Coliseum and our Molson Canadian three stars tonight. Star number three from the Calgary Flames, defenseman Zarly Zalapski. Star number two, the man who was the hero last game, almost a hero again tonight, but played great at both ends of the rink. Jeff Linden, Trevor Lindor of three to three, the Saddle Dome for game seven on Saturday night. Talk about desperation hockey, uh, talk about it tonight. Well, you know, we weren't trying to play desperate, really. We were just trying to, you know, play our style and play patient and, and wait for our chances, really. And, you know, we try to take it a period of time. What was the thought going into overtime? Well, you know, we, we kind of felt that we'd been outskated in the third period for the most part. We only had a couple shots, and we wanted to try and turn the tides, keep our short, uh, our shift short, and, and, and try and get some shots. And uh, They made a mistake, and, and it gave us a power play, and it turned out. Yeah, too many men was a big mistake. Let's uh, take a look at uh, your game-winning goal now uh, in overtime that uh, came at the 16:43 mark you can describe. Well, Pavel just throws it through. It wasn't a, wasn't a hard shot or anything, but the rebound's sitting right there, and Vernon kicked it right to me. and. I was able to get it, get it under him. Uh, our power play hadn't been great uh, all night, but uh, you know it, it comes up big uh, in overtime like that. You took a lot of heat from the fans, I guess, before this series uh, started. You feel now that uh, maybe well, they're right in your corner? You know, I don't think I took a lot of heat. Not you mean, necessarily, but the team uh, in general. Uh, well, you know, I think that uh, we got a, a series isn't over. We had a lot of work left yet, but uh, um, you know, we didn't have a great season. We were just kind of up and down and in and out all season. And, and uh, I think this playoff has really brought our, the best out in our team, and hopefully we can continue that. It's funny when Calgary was coming in here because uh, they won the previous two games. How much thought was given to that, that Calgary played uh, so well in this building? Well, we haven't played great at home all year, and you know, we were concerned about that, but we knew in games three and four that we'd put, the, you know, put together a couple good games, and uh, if it wasn't for Mike Vernon playing so well, we may have won both of them. So we felt pretty good being at home here, and uh, you know, it's great to be in front of the home fans, of course. And you know, you talk about Mike Vernon. Let's talk a little bit about Kirk McLean, too. Absolutely. He, you know, as good as Mike Vernon's played, uh, Kirk's played as well. And, you know, uh, out here on the West Coast, Kirk maybe doesn't get the recognition he should, but he's played great, and, uh, you know, he'll be great in Game 7. Down 3-1 a couple of years ago to the Winnipeg Jets. How much did you draw on that for this series? Well, I think the experience helped. I, I think that, uh, you know, definitely Winnipeg and Calgary are two different teams. I think that uh, uh, Calgary's got a lot more offense, and, uh, and, and a little experience helped, and, you know, we're just trying to take it a period of time. We looked at this as a, as a three, you know, as a nine-period type segment, and we got six down, we need three more. Uh, glad you didn't give us seven periods uh, tonight like the other game. I, I don't know how long we could have handled that one, but the suspense was great. Uh, you ended it, and we're going to game seven, and best of luck there. Thank you. Game seven will come up Saturday night in Calgary. The Flames and Canucks, the final score here tonight, thanks to Trevor Linden, and the Canucks obviously very happy about it. 3-2 Vancouver winning more in a moment. If you look at Boston and Montreal in Game 7, it's been a very interesting record over the years. Boston 8-6 and six in deciding 7th games in playoff series. But against Montreal in 7th in deciding games, the Bruins just 1-3. and three. Number 6, and they face first round elimination here for the first time since the early 1980s. Let's go to Boston Garden and take a look at what happened. The Bruins go after Patrick Waugh early. Good passing here, and it's Glenn Murray who bullets one right past Patrick Waugh from the slot there. Second of the playoffs for Murray, one nothing for the Bruins. Later in the first, Ted Donato picks up the puck, steps over the red line and blasts it. Patrick Waugh doesn't get it all. It trickles in, and Kevin Haller can't get there in time. Bruins have a 2-0 lead after one. Dr. Murray's hoping his team can get back into it in the second period, but the Bruins just keep on coming. One and a half minutes into the second period. Power play. Ted Donato slits a pass through to Adam Oates. He waits and fires through the five hole. Just like that, the Habs are down. Three nothing. John Leclerc trying to get the Montreal Canadiens back into a big hit here on Knipscher. But that doesn't rattle Boston. Doesn't rattle Knipscher, certainly. Stewart to Knipscher here, and he bats a rolling puck. Past Patrick Waugh, who slid across too far. Boston with a commanding 
four, nothing lead. And the Bruins fans eating this up, of course, especially when Montreal are the victims. Cam Stewart playing well for the Bees. Here he nails Peter Popovich almost over the boards and into his own bench. Third period, Fred Knipscher leaves it for Ray Bork, and he can still let them go, boy. And you watch it come into your living room. Zing, right past Patrick Waugh. Boston with a 5-1 lead in game number seven. Looks as if Harry Sinden and the Bruins are headed to the next round. Cheer up up there, Harry. The Habs got a couple of late goals, but Patrick Waugh's face says it all. A valiant effort by this man through the playoffs, but he couldn't carry that team anymore. It's the Bruins who come up big in Game 7, and they are deserving winners as they beat Montreal 5-3, and they win the series. Glenn Murray, Ted Donato, Adam Oates, Fred Knipscher, and Ray Bork, the snipers for Boston. Dampus with his first goal of the series. That was one of the problems right there. Kevin Haller and Mike Keane with the other goals. Montreal, the first defending Stanley Cup champ to be eliminated in the first round since Calgary in 1990. The Bruins have won five of their last six series against the Montreal Canadiens. Let's go to Boston now for a post-game report. Here's Michael Whelan. Well, the Bruins probably think that justice was finally served as they outplayed and outshot the Montreal Canadiens throughout this series, and yet it took them seven full games to win it. Tonight, a decisive 5-3 victory right here in the Garden. Both, both teams probably would have admitted that it was going to be a long series. Uh, it was a battle, there's no question about it. Um, right down to the last, in the last whistle, easily packed it in. That's a lot of class. That's a very classy organization. And Everybody knew, I'm sure, on both teams that it was going to be a long series, and uh, it was going to be a battle all the way. And uh, Come to seven games. I mean, it doesn't get any better in the seventh game in the in, in the playoffs. So, uh, I mean, it was it was a good game. We got out to an early lead, and uh, I mean, they they played a great game. They battled really hard to get back into it, but uh, we built too big a lead, I think, for them to come back. Super feeling, super game. Uh, the guys played great. You know, it, it took seven games and uh, against the Stanley Cup champions. I sensed it was our night before we even got on the ice. I felt like, uh, you know, there was a lot of build up, and I think the game six was uh, was you know obviously crucial for us and. Uh, I kind of got that feeling in the locker room that we were going to come out and, uh, you know, play play an excellent game. They came out very aggressive, and it seemed like we were just trying to play our, our, our regular style game. We're taking opportunities are there. We weren't forcing opportunities, and, you know, maybe looking back, maybe we should have played aggressive from the start. Maybe they were taking some chances, and, and really that's not in our style of play, and they capitalized on them. Uh, we changed the game around, like I said, once it was 2 nothing. but by that time it was play catch up and you got to give up the big opportunities and, and that's unfortunately what we did. They win that game 6 in Montreal we gave them the momentum. It was to us to take it back and, and uh, you know, I thought the guys were ready and we were ready and uh, they, they get the first one and it was the first one was really important thing in that game and, and uh, they, they work harder and harder and it was tougher, end, but we, we never let down, and we tried to come back, but we, didn't, we came back short from two. So the Stanley Cup champs are out, and Boston moves on. In the other series that would end Friday night, really tough to say goodbye to one of these teams. One of the stellar goaltenders would have his season end on Friday night, and that's too bad. Dominic Hasek and Martin Brodeur, the youngster, last game made 70 and 50 saves, respectively. It's been terribly entertaining, this hockey, and Game 7 was no different at the Brendan Byrne Arena. There is young Brodeur, maybe feeling the pressure of Game 7 at home, and there is Hasek. Nothing gets him down. He's tested early. Makes a good save off here. Uh, Scott Niedermeyer right here off a blast from the point. The Sabres actually strike first and give Hasek a lead. Dale Howardchuk back to the point to Philippe Boucher, and he walks in and rips it past Brodeur, who is screened by Himmelab. one nothing Sabres. Brodeur makes the save of the series, though, a bit later. They bobble the puck back there, and Dave Hannon will jump on it right here, but Brodeur reaches out with a glove. And Hannon puts it right into his trapper. Wow. Some huge hitting in this game. Look at Jason Dodd drill Randy McKay. And he takes it on the nose in the glass. And afterwards, looks worse for the wear. Devils tie it up before the end of the first. Bruce Driver was shot from the point. Hasek will get a piece of it, but evidently he was bothered by Randy Moeller in the crease, or near the crease. The game tied at one. And uh, still not a capacity house up there in the upper reaches of Brendan Burns. Some empty seats. Don't know why. Great hockey game. Great series. More big hitting. That's uh, Bill Guerin hammering Bodger. And here's Brad May giving it to Fatisov. Behind the net. Second period, still tied at one. John McClain will just miss a tip in here. Goes over the net. Bernie Nichols gobbles it up, takes a quick look out, spots Claude Lemieux, and he lets it go quickly. A bang bang play, a goal. Two to one Devils. Now Hasek keeps the Sabres in this game. Terrific save here off. Corey Mellon in close. He's got the right pad out and makes the save. Later. Stefan Riche in alone. Good sniper. Hasek's got that one too. 44 saves in this game. What a great goaltender he is. The offense has one last chance to tie it up. Howard Chuck. Can't get it through to find the net and hit somebody in front. That